Hi there, welcome to my first video. I thought I would make one in response to other people starting out sculpting and asking what the best tools are to get. The answer to that would be is don't go for the really cheap ones and don't go for the really plastic ones. Um, go for the medium priced ones. And your best place really is online. I mean, you have hobby craft stores, but really you're paying over the odds for something you can get online if you're willing to wait for a couple of days. I'm just going to talk to you through some of the tools that I use. Um, because you don't have to go spend a fortune if you really don't. You're going to find a few that you are keep going to go back to them and, you know... You'll soon find out which ones work for you and what ones feel more comfortable because everybody will find a lot of the same ones good but also there's a lot of people like different sizes and techniques and what works for one person won't work for someone else. So if you're working with clay then you need to get these what you call ribbon tools. And these come in different sizes as well. I think these are... Oh, six to eight inch handles and they're double sided you can get the double sided or the single sided ones as well and these basically cut into the clay as you can see um, they're different shapes so you can get into little angles and curves or if you're going for something a little narrower and you want finer detail you can go for the one that's this size as well an invaluable tool Next are what you call a rake tool. These are handmade um, from a guy on eBay and they weren't expensive at all. So you can spend as little or as much as you want them. But if you get a decent book, there's a lot of them. We'll show you how to make them yourself as well. And what these rake tools do, if I'll try and hold it up close so you can see, it's a guitar string and they're put into an old paintbrush and they've got the grooves on them. So when you're raking clay, it's a bit like raking the garden. In order for your garden to get smooth, you put the rake across it and it smooths it all out and it's got lines and that's what you need to do with clay. And you get them in different sizes, that's sort of a number four paintbrush size. This is a small one and they go right down into this teeny tiny one as well. You really do need them. Now another couple of tools that you really really well need is what I call a smoothing spoon. You can call it whatever you want, that's just what I call it, that isn't an official name of it. And if you can see, it's got a curve at the back and it's small as well. And it smooths the clay, it's got the angle, so if you've got little curves, that's you would be very lucky if you can craft and manipulate clay without one of these. They are absolutely in value, and I do recommend that that's one of the first tools that you buy. Most of these are double sided. I got mine on eBay again, it wasn't a lot, it was five, six pounds. And you get a load of them, you get ones with different ends on them. I like this one as well because it's pointy. You also get wooden ones. As you can see, this is the wooden version of it. And it's got like a almost like a golf club cut in half shape. Again, this is for smoothing, or you can use the other side. And again, it's double-sided with a point where you can use it. I also have this one, which is a flatter one. As you can see, it's quite flat, and again, that's for smoothing. I mean, some people can work without these things, but that's probably on a larger scale. I work in a really small scale. When I'm not doing fairy houses, I do fancy figures, and they're absolutely invaluable. So, big tip, get yourself one of them. And then you've got the silicon shaper tools. Again, this is a nice smooth one. I picked these up in one of the works shops for two, three pounds again online. You can get them. You've got the round pointy one 
and you've got like a flat one where you can see you can do that sort of smoothing on it. You get them in all different sizes, even to the a really teeny tiny one. Again, that's for really fine work. Again, get what size feels more comfortable to you. Um, because if you get the ones that you're most comfortable with, you're going to use them more. Now, another one I'm going to move on to pots. Don't go spending loads of money on different pots for loads of different tools because you will need them all to hand. So these, this is an old toothbrush holder that the soap dispenser broke, so I cleaned it out and it holds everything. As you can see, here's some more of that ribbon cutters. Again, we're going on the bigger ones, carved ones. Now, another invaluable tool you're going to get if I can reach that without starting the camera is a craft knife. Again, you do not need to go spending lots of money on them, but I would advise you go for middle for diddle priced because after a certain point of expense you're getting the same for your money. I am um, I bought one actually from Aldi's and I've got one from Hobbycraft and the one from Aldi's was half the price and it's just as good. Craft scissors Oops, sorry about that. Craft scissors again. Get yourself a nice pair of craft scissors. But when you're putting out your armature you don't need an expensive pair if it's only for cutting tin foil because they will blunt. Um, so again, don't spend loads of money unless you're getting them for cutting fabric, in which case you should get a good pair. Um, you'll need an old container for water because water for air drying clay is your best friend. This is a cheap tub I got to fill an iron with and it, it's brilliant because it's plastic, you can wash it out, the clay doesn't stick, um, costs nothing. So, and it's nice and deep, got a fine big pool, plenty of water in it, so it'll last you some time. This is an old dog food measuring cup I have, and corn flour. When you're using moulds, for example, if you're making things out of a garlic press I've got here, do not do not put it straight into that without dusting it down with corn flour. Just a paintbrush. Again, look, cheapy paintbrush. I think I got a set of five of these for two quid online. And it's an acrylic brush. Don't get the watercolour ones because it doesn't hold the corn flour. And just dust it, dip it in the and then corn flour and then dip it into there. Don't go buying expensive ones. And the last thing you should get as well, this is just a cheap one for just now to see I get on, is a Lazy Susan. As you can see, it holds your sculpture and works it around instead of you touching the sculpture. If this was a sculpture and you didn't have that, you'd be moving it around, you know, your finger marks could get on it. You are going to have to smooth it all down again. You know, this again was cheap eBay. I think it was five quid. You can get the nice glass ones, which I am going to invest. But for making fairy houses, this does the job. So there you go. There's a few of your basic tools. You don't need to spend a lot of money. And any questions, feel free to ask. Happy sculpting.